I did the tiny tiny sex sort of island where I went round Ireland with a camper van and regular guys come in. I you know, made the newspapers. It was it was big. Yeah. Um, and then I followed up with the tiny tiny sex sort of Scotland. But the Scottish were a bit scared mm-hmm. because they saw like the newspapers in Ireland blew up. So I think some of them were a little bit scared. They didn't want to be front page of the newspapers, you know? <laughs> it's a little bit of a sort of version <laughs> of like you agree to do someone's podcast. You're like, no one's going to hear this. And then you realize, oh, it's a little bigger than I thought. And you're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> It's too late, mate. You've signed the paperwork. But first, a word from our sponsors. Are you ready for the Unleashed Tour, where shamelessness, sexiness, and laughter collide in a hilarious orgy of fun, discovery, and sex edutainment? Embark on a captivating nationwide journey with the Shameless Sex Podcast and an electrifying ensemble of sex educators and sex-positive entertainers as they bring you an unforgettably titillating live experience. Be a part of mesmerizing, entertaining, boundary-pushing acts, Shameless Sex Style. Ever heard of the Slurpee Stick Shift? Want to learn how to bury your face in her? How about some dirty talk improv or brat taming 101? Hmm. Get ready for nonstop laughter as our charismatic hosts and entertainers weave humor into the fabric of this liberating celebration of sexual diversity and freedom. Engage in interactive segments, Q&A sessions, and a chance to connect with like-minded individuals in an inclusive and empowering environment. Listen up, Portland, Chicago, Seattle, we're coming to you. For more information and to get your tickets right now, go to shamelesssex.com and be part of a night that will be fun, educational, sexy, hilarious, and shamelessly unforgettable. Seats are filling up fast, so don't miss out on the most unforgettable show of the year. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to the speed daters, to the dating haters, to the hate fetishists, and the fetish ball queens. This is Billy Presida, and you're listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Colon, sex positive conversations. Is my voice too bro to say the phrase sex positive? Does it, does it sound insincere when this voice says it? Like if I said, if I spoke a little bit more like this, hello, everybody. Today is Slut Talk with Billy Presida on NPR. Would that, would that feel, anyways, hi, welcome to the show. This week on the podcast, I have on porn star Tanya Tate, and unofficially, our uh, second guest on the show is a fly I continuously try to kill in her presence. I look forward to sharing that convo with y'all in, uh, in just a little bit, but first, Look, the universe can't always mess with my heart like this. It's it's not nice. Okay. Here's what happened. Last week, I hosted a speed dating event. If you're new to the show, I frequently am hired to MC speed dating events. And as I'm going through the list, making name tags, I come across a name, Ronald Presida. I swear to God, do not fuck with my... Sh- do not... Go find this man and message this man. Just just don't, okay? It's not good for Billy if you do that. Just enjoy a story. We do not need any follow-up. I see a man on the list named Ronald Prasita. Same area code as me. Now, I grew up in North Jersey Prasita, okay? The the, the North Jersey Prasitas pretty much all live in and around and near each other, except for the Greenwich Presidas. They were always the richer Presidas. They lived further away. I saw them less often. But when I did see them, I mean, they did have a mansion. Uh, No, but I was a North Jersey Presida. There are some other enclaves enclaves of Presidas, like there's the California Presidas. I know how I'm connected to them. I think that's from uh, my grandpa's brother Carl's lineage, right? Okay, I get them. There were always these Long Island Presidas I would hear about. I think they work in tiling. And I'm, I'm, see, I'm North Jersey Construction Presidas. They were the Long Island Tile Presidas. Billy, what does this have to do with sex and relationships? Nothing. Never knew my connection to the Long Island Presidas. Whatever. I, this man gets to check in at speed dating. Okay, I, I say, here's your name tag. Here's your pamphlet. Also, who the fuck are you? 
what's the thing here? He goes, oh, yeah, you know, I think it's my great-grandpa Greg. He had a brother, William. I go, oh, great-grandpa Willie. See, I have a great-grandpa Willie. He was a bartender at McSorley's, and I have his wristwatch. I'm, I know great-grandpa Willie. There we go. Brothers, that makes him my, I'm looking up online like an extended family tree template to see what this man is to me. I said, oh, so he's my third cousin. So cool. I'm going around telling the women at the event. I'm like, oh, hey, have you, uh, t- tell me about Ronald. Yeah, you've talked to my third cousin more than I ever have. So can, wh- what's he like? Is, is he a cool guy? I am told he likes anime. I'm super excited about it. I'm, I'm, I text my dad. I say, hey, I just met my third cousin. Great grandpa Willie's brother from his line. And that and as soon as my dad started saying it, I immediately knew what he was saying. And I was like, ah, because I was just so excited to connect with this other Prasita. He says, no, great grandpa Willie was William Yulo, not Prasita. They were not brothers. So he's not my third cousin. I'm walking around the place sad. I am. I was mourning the loss of family. I have gained and lost a family member over the course of an hour. I had to go up to Ronnie. I call him Ronnie now. I had to go up to Ronnie and say, hey, I have, I have bad news for you. He said, oh, no, is the event over? I said, no, we're not third cousins. We figured, okay, but we got to still figure out what the connection is. Probably goes back to the old country. Ah, Paisan. Yeah, you know, okay. I text my aunt Christine, who's like kind of unofficially, I think the family historian. And I say, hey, you know, are we related to the Long Island Presidas? Like maybe back in back in Italy? And she says, that's a definitive no. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I was... I was so excited to connect with this other man. I thought we were going to become cousin friends, and now he's just some fucking dude. That was my emotional roller coaster on Thursday night. How are you? But if there are any Prasidas listening, and, and you have like a, a Grandpa Carl, maybe? Anyways, I hope the man got some matches. I hope I hope he met somebody special. Many of you seem to enjoy last week's episode. Uh, it seemed to have been a special one for many of you. Uh, according to our episode discussion channel in the Discord server, Four Finger Willie 4, which is not my grand-grandpa Willie either. Uh, he writes, as a single man living alone in New York City, I want Stephanie to come over to my place and evaluate my bathroom. Great episode, Billy. To which Precious Bodily Fluids responded, get a female guest to do a bonus how-to episode for men to get their bedrooms and bathrooms in order. It is a frequent topic and fascination for me on this show. Uh, the, The things that are like classic straight guy shit in their apartments, whether you're poor or you live in a high raise by yourself, you know, there seem to be these consistencies like mattress on the floor, no hand towels. Beard shavings, some certain cleanliness things that seem to be consistent among the men's. And uh, I'm always fascinated to learn new ones and to learn new ways that I'm fucking up. And it came up again last week with Stephanie Kaiser. Tulip Noir in the server uh, made a good point. Uh, She wrote, honestly, a great informal primer would be to watch that one. uh, It's not a sketch. It's a, there was a song. I think it's in the beginning of the pilot episode of crazy ex-girlfriend where uh, the main character, Rachel, she goes through her whole date night prep routine. It's funny and exaggerated, but a good point. And women can be messy and dirty as fuck. Do not get me wrong, but on average, femme presenting people are more harshly judged for that at an earlier age. And I remember that it was that song that actually sold me on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because I thought about my date night routine and oh my, uh, it is very brief unless I need to trim my pubes. I want to say straight dudes, but you know what? I also emceed a, a gay speeding event last week and it seemed to overlap. I will go to, when I host speed dating, 
far too many of the men, grown men in their 30s, in their 40s, will show up in like cargo shorts and a wrinkly graphic t-shirt. I mean, even, again, I am not a fashion guy, but like throw a fucking checkered or flannel uh, uh, long sleeve button down shirt over it and leave it open. Now I'm layering. Do something. So many of these guys show up to speed dating where they're going to meet 15, 20, 25 women to make a first impression. And they show up looking like dog shit. The neck beard, it's not trimmed down, nothing. And I'm like, is this the first impression you want to make? On like a date, if I, if I want to make a first impression, I'll at least just like throw a button down old navy flannel long sleeve shirt on top of it because like now i'm layering i'm doing something i always clean up my neckline like i am dog shit and i bare minimum will again clean up the neckline throw something on top of the graphic t-shirt if the if the weather dictates it uh dare i say even wear a dress shirt but button down if I'm feeling fancy, I even have a pair of date night boots there. I am told they are called a Chelsea boot. And I know that they are my date night boots because my sister got them for me for Christmas and said, these are your date night boots. Like tr- they are not expecting much from us guys. We can do truly so little and get so far ahead. Don't keep pushing it to see how little you can do. Almost all the women to speeding show up looking like they wanted to impress somebody. But as is in the world, very oftentimes, women try so hard to impress dudes who do not seem to want to impress them at all. Anyways, if you want to, uh, you know, give your thoughts on this, last week's episode, this week's episode, this topic, or any topics we discuss here, jump on into the episode discussion channel in the Champagne Room, our super free, super fun, super sex positive, very friendly Discord server. Link in the notes or go to manwhorepod.com slash Discord. We have channels telling sex stories. We have channels about weed, channels about fashion, channels about kink, movies, sex toys, and more. Come on in, join the community. It's free. Let me tell you a quick little story. Manhor Con 2018, uh, a gentleman comes to check in. I, I check in was in Washington Square Park. I had a table set up. I had all the swag bags and a little check in list and little folders for everybody. And uh, one guy, he comes up and he checks in and he gives me a hug and introduces himself. It's my first time, obviously, meeting this man in person in real life. And, you know, he just, he tells me like how much the podcast means to him and how hopeful it's been, uh, for him, you know, since, since going through the divorce with his ex-wife and, you know, he tells me how he's, um, he's, he's selling his house. And once the sale goes through on it, that, you know, he's going to have quite the donation for me. I think he says like, there's going to be some zeros on the end of it. And I I was like, oh, wow. (laughs) But I will say he has been a very uh, loyal, active, awesome, kick-ass Patreon member. But I want to say, you know, I've, I've heard this sentiment before where there are people who are really excited to, um, you know, help me out financially, to contribute to the cause, to be a patron of my art. But they'll, they'll think, oh, I need to be able to give you, Billy, like a large amount of money. I need to be able to get, cut you a big check. I need to make a large pledge per month. But I got to tell you, I don't need the donation from one person with a lot of zeros at the end. I need a lot of you to join the Patreon with no zeros, just $3 a month. That's what I need. That's all you got to do to do your part. It's $3 a month to join the Patreon. And at the $3 tier, you're going to get access to, uh, you know, behind the scenes, bonus content, extra writings. There's a lot of discord benefits like hot movie nights, $3 a month. You can be like Lael Bellamy, who is the recipient of this week's fan whore appreciation moment. I want to say thank you so much, Lael, for doing your part. It means a whole big deal to me. Become a member today. Support the pod you love at patreon.com slash manwhore podcast. Uh, that's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash 
Man Whore Podcast. My guest this week, Tanya Tate. Uh, she's been in the porn industry for 15 plus years. She has won a slew of awards. She emailed all of them to me. And we really, you know, dived into the topic of, you know, of privacy in this day of social media, in this day where not only do we want to know uh, what the inside of our porn, favorite porn star's butthole looks like, we also want to know how they vote. Uh, we, 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 we want to know what kind of salad they had, possibly to result in such an interior butthole. So it, it, it's interesting. And so, you know, she, she has some boundaries about like what she does and doesn't share. So we talked about how she decides what she does or doesn't share. I think we had a lot of fun. She's got a bonus episode coming out uh, tomorrow exclusively on Patreon. But for now, let's go chat with Tanya Tate. Enjoy ad-free episodes at patreon.com slash podcast. It used to be, you know, when I first started in the adult industry, you'd go, you'd do your scene, mm. you'd go home. So the fans would see what was on the screen. Mm. You know, you go into a set and when you're in a set, you know, you, you're getting ready. There's, you know, you're doing your pictures, you're doing the video. There's a lot of stop, start, stop, start. But the fans only ever see the polished version. They right. only ever see the full movie. They only ever see, you know, the pictures that made it. Well, now we've got a fly. Oh, <laughs> you gotta oh, yeah. protect there, there, me there from ha- the- Look, I've been trying to get this one <laughs> singular fly. I'm like a fly ninja. Yesterday, <laughs> I had a little towel, and I was fucking. I had, there were dead bodies in that kitchen because I was fucking pow, pow, pow. I was like nailing this one has eluded me. I know this. It's gonna fucker. keep landing on me. Don't like if you're gonna protect me, don't smack me legs. When you- get it, get it. Go on. Oh fuck. Oh, it's moved. Come on, get it. Get it. I'm going to keep this handy. And okay. If I can, if I can he's, he's, ninja it, I will. Ninja but, got the uh, fly. There has been this one rogue fly. It's like <laughs> an episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so so they only see the polished version. By the you way, know, all that, that's staying in. I, I, I know. I, I, like, I like the unpolished <laughs> because, because I grew up seeing only polished versions of stuff. Yeah. Because like I'm old enough that like uh, you know to to only have that, yeah. And so I'm like almost tired of it. I want the I want you something want fucking role. real yes. in this world. You know what I mean? Well, that's the difference now. You know when when it was just studio work, that's what you got. But then it started changing. Mm-hmm. You know, and OnlyFans got big, and of course everyone like me, we have an OnlyFans. And I remember the first time that I started doing OnlyFans, and Pre-2020 I twenty twenty or after. Well. Probably because it was around, but it was, it was around, it wasn't but, it, like a but it, household name. I, yeah, I really didn't start. I, I mean, I, I think I registered in 2017. You know, I got the account just for the sake of having the account, and a few dollars trickled in. I thought, well, I didn't do anything. What's that? Mm. But then I realized like people were using it. So I'm like, okay, I, I got to start using it. I'm going to do some solo stuff. And I just had my son, and you know, I wasn't, I, I didn't feel camera ready. You know, I, before I was pregnant, you know, mm. everything was there. And then after pregnancy, you've got to get your body shape back again. So I was just like, I don't know. It just, it, it didn't feel right. And like my friends were like, yeah, just, just like go on, just take pictures. And I'm like, but I've not got hair and makeup and I'm in my pajamas. And they, were like, it doesn't and they matter. went, that's what they want. Yeah. And I went, oh, mm-hmm. they really want the candid you at home version And I was like, so like afraid at first. And I like, I can't be putting these pictures out. And then I realized, you know what? It don't matter. Mm -hmm. This is me and this is what they want to see. So, you know, it gets to the point where, well, the fans want to see everything. So, so I love it. You know, I, I do give them a lot. Um, You know, I'm very accessible. Um, You know, I've got all the free social media, the Twitter and the Instagram, but I don't sit there all day long talking to them because, you know, it's my job and Mm. I don't have time. So, you know, they go to Sex Panther and I have Minx, which is um, like a platform where they can text, they can click the button. You know, It's like Sex Panther. It's it's Sex Panther. It it is Sex Panther, but it's, it's the porn star version. Okay. So I'm also on Sex Panther and then they made a sister platform just for porn stars with, you know, that have made mainstream porn movies mm. that have got a high following on Twitter and Instagram. 
Um, so on there, you, you know, I'm very accessible and people, they'll text me and they'll ask me questions and they'll talk to me and they'll have conversations with me. And I have to think to myself, you know, where do I draw the line? And sometimes people ask me questions and I literally think, I don't want to answer that. Yeah. And I will say to them, I'm, I'm not answering that. Like, you know, if someone wants to ask, like, what's your legal name and what's your address? What, what, what a casual question. Like, hey, by the way, like, what's your, like, legal government name? What's your social that, security I, number? I have been, I've never <laughs> been asked my social security <laughs> number, but I've been asked my legal name. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, it's, it's like none of your business, you know. Um, it's so a the, strong opening question. It's, it's like, let's start slow. Yeah, it, it's like, it's not going to happen. So there are things that you've got to think, well, I'm going to reveal to you everything. Mm -hmm. But still, there's some things that you want to hold back. And, sure. you know, some really personal things that you do want to hold back. You know, I what happens, you know, I I go and I have lots of sex, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm in a really good situation because I can be like, okay, that's a hot guy. And I'll see him on Twitter, you know. And I, I'll be honest with you, I used to work with, a, like, back in the day, I did, like, the amateur series. So I did a tour where I went around Island and it was Tanya Tate's sex <laughs> I can't get me words. Oh, Tanya Tate's sex tour of Island. And we had you. We were kind of like still. The fucking. It got your head. Got me. The <clears throat> fly got his head. <laughs> I left that, it. <laughs> you weren't really, uh, but like they we were still like fresher in porn at that point, right? Yeah. And, was, but did they call it? Because like nowadays they have the whole like they call it fuck a fan, right? Like there's yeah. that style of porn. Yeah. So I did a lot of that style of porn. You uh -huh. know, I did the tiny taste sex sort of island where I went around island with a camper van and regular guys come in. I had a laugh. It was great. Yeah. I you know, made the newspapers. It was it was big. Yeah. Um, and then I followed up with the Tiny Tate Sex Tour of Scotland. But the Scottish were a bit scared mm -hmm. because they saw, like, the newspapers in Ireland blew up. So I think some of them were a little bit scared. They didn't want to be front page of the newspapers, you know? It's a little bit of a sort of version <laughs> of, like, you agree to do someone's podcast. You're like, no one's going to hear this. And then you realize, oh, it's a little bigger than I thought. And you're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> it's too late, mate. You've signed the paperwork. But I did, like, the Tanya Tate Casting Couch show I, on my website. Like, the guys were coming. It was all amateur so you, you know i did that i did boy girl scenes mm. and i i stopped boy girl scenes back in 2013 and i just went to just girl girl because i was trying for a baby mm. it took me a long time you know i did ivf mm. and it, it it was a journey but it was a very successful journey right i was um, listening to your recent episode with courtney where like in the intro you were talking about like goals and go get goals and my goal yeah. the goal what i want is like i want to be a mom and i'm gonna yeah. and so it's like actualizing and all that yeah so yeah. it sounded like they, it was more it was a little more uh more complicated yeah it, yeah it was complicated that's a good word um but you know our journeys in this life we're all here it's you know things happen and some people see it as like a negative thing and bad things are happening but it's a learning curve mm. and it's all about well we're learning something from it Mm. you know we, we're giving it well by by me having a difficult journey it's made me appreciate being a mom a whole lot more than i ever thought it could be yeah y you know well like you know in and in, you started around like 2009 2010 even that's even yeah that's pre only fans that's also pre everyone's on social media right so because before yeah. only fans people were realizing oh i gotta be like a personality yeah on twitter Right, yeah. and then like that's how it becomes this funnel system. So all that they got really from me on Twitter was like, "Here's my naughty America scene, yeah. here's my Brazos scene." But you weren't using it as like a micro blog. You were like, if you want to see anything, maybe like personal like that, you will have to pay over on these platforms. Well, they, the platforms didn't quite. It it wasn't like the money maker that they are now. I mean, there were a few little platforms. I did do some of the texting and the phone right. calls. Well, I'm getting as like the social media was like you. Some people do. I think what you do is like here's my content. Like if you want to like use this oh, as a preview space, uh, yeah. go there. But some of them like will use it as like a place to shout, you know, kind of shout out about their opinions. Or some of them use it as like a little micro blog. Some of them. Mine use was as, driving yeah. traffic all to my website. Right. You were so, like, I'm business about this. Yeah, I, yeah. I was very business. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanted to see anything, you go to my website. Mm -hmm. That's where it was. Yeah. Or you go and join Naughty America. You go and look there. That That's, that's where it was. 
but you know now it's 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 very open you know the fans they can come they can you know they can talk to me yeah. on twitter and i do go and i scroll back and i like and i respond to some comments yeah. and if they come inside me dms you know i'm gonna be like hey thanks for being a fan but if you want to talk to me go to the business places sure. because that's where it's all going to be happening um so I, I do use social media to drive the traffic to yeah. where I want it to be. And, you know, they, I'm very approachable. But at the same time, you've got to respect that, you know, it's all about time. Mm. And people are like, well, I just want to have a normal conversation. Can yes. I not just call you on? And like, so no, you can't. <laughs> no. How about, no, how about if you want to call me? Well, just just a normal chat. I'm like, well, it's my time. Yeah. So if you want to, uh, my time, we can talk about whatever you want. But you got to like, start putting your hand in your pocket i think the benefit of that attitude always having that attitude is like that's kind of always that's the expectation generally being set i've been struggling uh with you know for the last 10 years i've been putting my sex and dating life on the internet i'm very vulnerable i, very, I share a lot of things about myself and then i think some people then feel a little entitled to anything about me and it's like i'm pretty open i got a couple secrets you know it's nice to mm -hmm. have a couple secrets uh it's uh, nice to have a couple things that aren't like for everybody but you know sometimes people will be in my dms and they either think they can ask anything they want or they think like i'm always available to have this back and forth chat and like i don't want my phone always blowing up like or, like or with personal whatever's yeah. i like my phone blowing up with like hey you got paid Oh yeah, I like that. I like that noise. <laughs> well, well, my Ming slash Sex Panther, it will flash up and I'll it comes up on my phone, so I know straight away I'm going to answer it. But yeah, like I have people that come in the DMs and I try and say to them, you know, oh, thanks for being a fan. You know, I'll say something, you know, one or two things to them, yeah. sentences, and then I'm like, okay, if you want to chat more, that's where we're going to be. Go to the other places, and sometimes they get mad with you, and you're, mm -hmm. they're like, well, why can't you talk to me? And I'm like. Well, do you, do you go to the supermarket and do you ask to walk out with your groceries for free? Mm. You know, but yeah, self entitlement. You know, it's it's a balancing act because I love my fans. Mm. You know, they are they make me they support me, um, but some of them don't know where to draw the line, mm -hmm. and it it's it's happened a lot, and it gets so they're um, very full on. Like, which is okay, you know, they, they're they respectful, they're tipping me, they're treating me, we're having a conversation, they're kind of, it's nice, I'm having a, you know, I'm having a good time, I'm chatting with them, but then sometimes it just goes too far, and they want too much personal information from you, yeah. and you've got to say no, or, you know, when I mentioned earlier that I'd stopped doing the boy-girl scenes back in 2013, okay. you know, I got, I just doing girl-girl, I got pregnant with the IVF, and my son, started doing the solo and i'm like okay now i'm ready i'm ready i feel ready i feel like more myself got my body back the fans were asking i started to do girl girl and then i thought you know what i'm gonna go back and start doing boy girl for just mm -hmm. for myself and my premium social media so you know i can go online and i'll look and i'll be like oh, that's a hot guy and I, I, he, he looks like he's mm -hmm. he's doing good and he's getting nominated and the girls are liking him so you know i take notice of these people so i was like you know what? i'm gonna start picking and choosing mm -hmm. like these guys the guys that like are very the popular guys the guys that are solid performers the guys that a business minded mm -hmm. you know um and i you know going back and suddenly like you got some fans and they're like they're mad because now you're working with guys guys who are not them yes that's and you is. are like you're there you're on camera and you're fucking another guy and it's like i i've had them in I my thought messages we had something tanya yeah i thought we had a thing yes <laughs> and i've had them where they've been like one of my biggest fans and then they've turned They've literally turned yeah. and like they're sending nasty messages. And I'm like, like even my family doesn't talk to me like this. Mm -hmm. And like these people, and sometimes you like have to say to them, this is not okay. Yeah. And you know, there's times when I literally go, okay, I'm done. I'm blocking you on every single place yeah. except the place where you have to pay. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, 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 I've had it where I didn't have do that. Have you had anyone like when you had to do that, you block them everywhere except where they have to pay. Then they do show up where they have to pay and they're paying. Do you like then have to put on the, oh, hey, baby, how you doing? Because now they have started paying or when they start paying, you're like, oh, this fucking guy. OK, hey, what's going on, Jim? Well, it depends. It, it depends who they are and what they've said. OK. Like, and if someone's like, I, 
like yesterday I blocked someone. Okay. Because they're saying derogatory things. And it's like, it's kind of like a pedo Mm -hmm. kind of derogatory thing. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm reporting you to the platform. The platform blocked them. And I'm done. So no matter how much money that guy would have spent, I would not talk to him. So if he shows up on like Sex Panther or Minx or OnlyFans, he'd be like, you can spend all you want. I still don't want to talk to you. Yeah. 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 Because I can can make those. You don't throw on like a fake like friendly thing. No. And it's still, I have people that will be nice and then they get all weird again and then you start going all like underhand comments or they'll start like putting pressure on you and oh yeah you know well I thought you was going to give me this for free but never mind like just because you've spent a lot of money or you've tipped a lot of money on me in the past doesn't mean today I owe you all my time and all my effort right. and like to the point where, well, I've spent loads of money on calling you. So why can't we just call for free now? Can't I just have your phone number? I'm like, no. no. So sometimes they'll put pressure on you and you really have to put them in the place and you mm-hmm. have to say, this is not okay. And these are, these are my boundaries. And I, sometimes they'll lose it, like mentally lose it. And, mm-hmm. um, but you know, sometimes they'll be like, Oh, okay. I realize I'm sorry. I overstepped. So it's all on a case by case basis, but yeah. if some there's people that I have literally blocked, on like there was a woman, I don't know whether it was a woman, yeah. but it was a woman, and then she was telling me where she lived, but she didn't give me the the like the full area. It was like half. It was like I don't know. Let's just say it was Santa Clarita. Sure. She was because you know that's kind of like an area where I'm hanging around. So she was like Santa Clarita, and I'm like that doesn't sound right. So there was a few like big red flags and um it got to the point where they were sending gifts and then it was just so full on like so full on with like they they come up with like a lot of elaborate stories like my brother had died or their parents had died in a car crash and then suddenly it was like oh well i've now six months later i've got to go and pick up the car that my parents had died in and so you were like oh okay this is all sort of like just heavy. Yeah, it, it was a lot of heavy emotional heavy. stuff. And so something would happen with me and I, I don't know, let's just say, I don't know, someone was really ill or mm. someone was dying. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it happened. It, it just it wasn't just one person. It was other people. Oh, somebody's got cancer. Oh, well, you know, I've got cancer. And I'm, hey, thinking, but you know what else? And I'm thinking, you haven't, you were just lying because I've mentioned, I know someone or someone's yeah. bringing it up. And they have to do one better. And even if it means telling them, telling you that they've lost people, yeah. people have died, they've been raped, or whatever, they will up the story. And it's it's really surreal. And I used to think, why are these people doing this? Mm. But I think they just either want your attention or they live in that fantasy world, you know. And I have to block them, and, and you block them on everything. And then suddenly letters come in the mail. And it's like, it was the girl and she called her name Tina. And I, I'm Tina's friend, but I'm also kind of her brother. And she's really sorry for how she misbehaved. And is it okay to like unblock her? And I'm like, what the fuck? You, now you're sending a letter from Canada, like saying, and it was heavy stuff. And I just was like, whoa. We're also getting the stories mixed up. Okay. It's, uh... yeah, it's the story's not even following. And there's like different people. And I, I'm like thinking, I'm sure that one died. I'm pointing. He's, you're looking over there. I'm, yeah, no, I just thought it was the fucking flying. I, as you see, I have my. I am I ready. Got it to ready. Slap it down. But you know what? I have a lot of lovely fans. Mm-hmm. I feel so blessed to just be in this life that there are so many people that are so kind and so helpful, and they have big hearts. And it's like I wake up and I'm like. It's a great day. Like the creepers are outnumbered by the good fans. Oh you my think? god, yes. Okay. So outnumbered. Just the creepers, because they're so creepy, they stand out in your mind. Yeah. But then you have to sit there and you think, you know what? Creepers move to the side because these are the people that deserve me. These are the people that I want to talk to. These are the people that I want to interact okay. with. You know? And I, I I do weekly live streams as well. So okay. um 
you know, obviously I'm on OnlyFans and I do like the... Are the live streams on behind a paywall or are they on like Instagram so, live? So I do like OnlyFans live streams where, you know, the people they can come, they can just sit and talk to me and they can talk dirty, whatever. And if they tip me enough, the boobs are out, the pussy's yeah. out. But, you know, I also do live streams in my kitchen and I'm sitting at the table with my son. And I do it on Instagram and YouTube, and it's a completely family friendly stream. Right, because it's not on the. Yeah, it's not yeah. on a paywall. What, what do y'all talk? What do you talk about? <laughs> well, we talk about anything and everything. Sure. It's just we sometimes we do drawing challenges. He's a really good artist. Okay. And I'm shit, right? So he is six years old, and okay, so we, yeah. he draws a picture. And then I have to, he chooses, like it could be a Pokemon or something. So we have to draw a Pokemon and then we'll hold them up to the camera and you have to say who, who, who's won. Okay. And he gets mad. If he doesn't win, he gets mad. But to be fair, most of the time his pictures are better than mine. Sure. Um, so we, we do that. Um, but, you know, we'll open gifts. Yeah. We'll talk about things that we've done. We went to England. We went to Disney World. We, we'll talk about different things. And I guess it's just the interaction between us and it, it, it it's a, Bit of, bit of comedy yeah. <laughs> like but it gets the fans to see me as a mom and gets to see me what it's like in my house it's a lot of energy it's a lot of fun um but they just you know i like to give them another side yeah and it doesn't it, it's i'm not asking them to sit there and like it, you don't have to pay to watch it but i do ask them to be respectful right in that it's a family-friendly stream and yeah. we say it many times, and I have moderators on. So if someone says oh, something, nice. they get kicked out. Okay. But they get told, and like my son will be like, family friendly, you better listen. Otherwise, you're going to get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Does he, like, can he see the screen when, like, if stuff pops up, or is it like, no, because far enough? well, yeah, the screen, yeah. it's on little iPhones. And like, we're he's busy drawing, he's busy drawing and stuff like that, that. Okay. you know. And you know what it's like on a little iPhone, it's okay. it's over there somewhere. I have the computer and I kind of turn it to the side so I can see the yeah. YouTube comments, but usually they're, they're deleted before I get the, to see them. Because the mods I have, like fans of yours, you have yes. like knighted, yeah, those are like those are like the top tier. Fr- you know, you are at the top of a fandom if like yes. someone is knighted, you're like, I trust you to help me block out the creeps, yes, yeah. Yes, these are. It's. It, do you do you reach out to a fan to like anoint them a mod, or do they like reach out and say, "Hey, if you need help, I can." Like, how how does how does a fan become a mod? Okay, so they're they're consistently. So every time I log on, I see them. I see them helping, and I see them interacting in a positive way. And I'll see them, you know, if I say English only, please. Mm. And sometimes they'll write English only. Or, you know, if I'm like family friendly, you'll see some of them. Oh, it's family friendly. So you kind of take notes and you're like, oh, okay. They're listening to the rules and they're helping reiterate the rules. Without a role, they're, they're. Yeah, without a role. Yeah, they're just. So if I, if I'm spotting people that without a role are doing it, um, or, you know, I guess people that, I do get sent gifts and sometimes people send gifts and then they come on and they watch and we unbox Re- real the gifts. Real quick, gifts. Oh, oh okay. Not G-I-F, gift, like a like a present. Like a present. Okay, like gotcha. I collect like Swarovski crystal. Uh, oh, it's gorgeous. Geez. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes I get sent Swarovski crystal to be added to my collection. Um, Y'all listening? Yeah. Swarovski I don't know crystal, if I have need for Swarovski, but I'd like a Swarovski crystal. <laughs> the, I don't know what I'll do with it, but it sounds cool. price. Huh? They go up in price. Oh, they 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 uh, they value it. Oh. Yeah, I I used to do a lot of collecting like Funko Pops, but it, it got to the point where I had hundreds of them, and I'm yeah. like, well, what am I going to do with them? <laughs> and so they ended up just being in. Well, I took them out the boxes, yeah. and they just end up being in a, in a big storage. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? But I was already kind of collecting this Rusky Crystal, and then I realized I forgot some on the me collection, and then I look, and the price is shot up, and I'm like. Oh my god! Wow. So like now I'm like okay now I've got to get them. So the ones that I do have, you look at them, they've all the, the value has increased on it, all of it. So I just think if anyone really wants to spend money on me, send spend something on that's an investment that it's gonna. If anybody increase. wants to buy me stocks in my name, <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> I think the biggest I've gotten is uh, so, um, a couple a long time ago bought me a bed. A bed. Ooh, I need. I, nice. I need a new bed frame. I was complaining like I had. I had slats and the slats were broken. Whatever. And they. They for Christmas. They were like, "Can we Aww. get you a bed? Here's the budget. Just send us a link." Oh, that's nice. Shout out to nice. the hookers. That's their last name. Their last name. Hookers. 
Their last name is Hooker. <laughs> But shout out to the hookers. Um, thank you again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, see, some of the some of yeah. them are, are really nice. So I guess. You so know, you so you see someone trying to help enforce rules, and you might like do you tap them privately? Like, hey, would you like to like help at, be an actual moderator? Well, if I see them a few times enough, and, no, no, and, yeah, you know, time. and then I might literally say it out loud. I yeah. just ask them out loud. They oh. say yeah. They say no. They ignore you. Sure. Well, if you're going to ignore me, then you're not going to be a moderator. Yeah. But I've seen them enough times. Sometimes with the other moderators, I'll be like, "What do you think of them?" And mm. we will like mention someone's name, and we'll be like, "Ooh, what do you think?" Because you can sometimes you can see triggers. Sometimes yeah. you can, you can see it the patterns, and you think their pattern is a is a good vibe. Mm. And sometimes you see others, and you think, "Ooh, you've got to keep my eye on them." Does like being a mod get? Do they get like a free titty picture once a month for like helping out, or is it just for the love of the game? Well, you know, I get to interact with them inside the DMs, okay. so they get to they do get to chat more. They with maybe me. get yeah, they maybe get to ask you a few extra questions that are of a respectful nature, but they they get a few extra, they get a little bit extra attention from you. Yeah, yeah, for you being know, so good. yeah, like I do, I chat with them, yeah. you know, and then sometimes you know I've sent. Christmas cards or a little That's Christmas so ornament out to to some of them, and yeah. you know, I, I I guess you know sometimes they've asked for stuff, and I've said okay, okay. Um, so you know, like a and, birthday flash. Can I have a birthday flash? I'm turning fifty. <laughs> And you're like, well, you know actually, what? It's someone's birthday coming up, actually. And so I was just like, I think I'm going to do them a little birthday shout out video. Oh, that's you so know? nice. So, yeah, so they do got little things, you know, but some of them yeah. are women. They don't need to, they, they're not waiting for my pussy to be flashed. Some of them really do not want to see me naked. Mm. Like, they're not there for the naked stuff. They're just there for the support, you know? Sure. So, by me giving them a titty pick there, the, some of them are like, oh, no. Yeah. It's like, not what I want. Considering all the back and forth we had over email, um, you know, trying to, you know, map things out, when, in that final one, that was very helpful, that the, that last longer email, I was actually really surprised. You said, and I do these live streams with my son. I was like, but the son was, is just out there. And I was like, okay, interesting. So, like, what led to that decision was that something you had to kind of think on decide on to be like do i really am i you know yeah i think because i was at home and i had a baby and i'm like what am i gonna do how am i gonna keep in touch with the fans like what am i gonna do to stay relevant and i thought well the only thing i can do is turn my youtube on and let the fans talk to me in the living room in the kitchen so I would like literally have him as a baby and make breakfast. That was it. Every single day, make breakfast. Uh. And then, you know, we was in lockdown and I, I'd be like, I'm here I am in the house making breakfast. And, you know, if you're a mom, you can't stop suddenly being a mom with a baby. Like, mm. what are you going to do with the baby? So I just sit him in the chair and he'd just be mm. screaming every so often and be like, well, this is life. Yeah. This is the way it is. So it kind of, you know, it kind of grew from there. Um, but, you know, I'm very mindful that there are idiots and stuff like that, you mm. know. So you, you I, I have the moderators and I can really block people if they sure. really are not behaving. But, yeah, that's really where it stemmed from. I just wanted a way to keep in touch with the fans mm -hmm. when I didn't have the time or the energy or like being a mom's exhausting. Also being like, in front of a camera by yourself talking like some people are great with that. I do a, a podcast with a guest for a reason. Me talking by myself for an hour. I can do right? it. And so, so you're I like, you it. turn on Instagram live and it's like, <laughs> what do I say? But then if you got the kid, it's like, okay, I got someone to work off of. Yeah. You he's know? my little sidekick. <laughs> yeah. Like it, 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 it cracks you up because he's, you know, he's got a little bit of a comedian in him. I don't mm -hmm. think he realizes it, you know, but he just says well, things the I, way that they are. Push him away from that path. It is not <laughs> glorious. <laughs> if I told you the, the shows I did the last couple of nights, it's a horror story. It's a oh, it's God. a cautionary tale. Um, yeah. Be like, you can make so much more money being funny in more productive ways. <laughs> yeah. I think he's probably going to be something to do with art because he's yeah. like you say he's so he's so good with the art. Cool, but but yeah, it's, you know it's fun, and I, I guess. If there's a day when it's not fun anymore, this is what I always say about life. If something is not fun anymore or something's causing you an issue, stop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one day I get on and I think, you know, well, I, I've had enough of you, Law. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm stopping this. 
that's it. I'll, I'll make the decision and I'll stop. Yeah. So until that day. Would you continue doing like the the PR work then? Yeah. Yeah. Y- you know, I you know I have a, a PR company as well, yeah. so we do help like other stars and content creators and a very models. detailed press sheet uh, oh, yes. uh preparation sheet i got oh yeah i asked another podcaster friend uh in town i won't say who but he, also, he does a show where most of his guests are, are are porn stars and uh and i was like hey so like any what's the skinny on tanya tate and he's like i haven't had her on but i've had some of her clients on very detailed like email prep sheet <laughs> And I was like, yeah, she sent one for herself. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like, I want to make sure you know about me. Like, you got to know. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Just... Every accolade you've ever gotten in porn over the last 15 years I mean, is in that email. Well, <laughs> I, I did shortlist them for you. But yeah, but yeah, they were my recent ones. Yeah. But but yeah, like a Hall of Fame and like 12 time mill for the year. Yeah. You, you need to know your points. Yeah. You know, so yeah. But there, there are other publicity companies that do not send anything yeah because i know when the clients come to me and i'm like okay you're gonna get a call sheet so you're gonna know everything they're like oh yeah I'm like oh we didn't get this before are there any challenges to motherhood you find that you think are unique to doing porn like of course being like a, a working mom mm. is, there's all sorts of challenges mm. but do you think there are any challenges that are unique to your job You know, just being a mom is difficult. And, you know, well, now you're going to go down (laughs) the question. Sure, yeah. I mean, you look, I'll I'll try to I'll try to follow you. But yeah, well, well, because it's not about him knowing, but just about like fucking scheduling. It's like, can you only do studio shoots during the school hours? Like, yeah, you you know, I have help. Is there a basement that you can't go into? Yeah, I have help, you know. So I have a big house. I have locked doors. I have help. So if I need to take a phone call, you know, I can send him out. He can be the other side of the house and Mm. there's like five doors locked in between. Um, You you know, you you just make things work. Yeah. Um, But yeah, you know, I've got some shoots. I've just had my boobs redone. So I was taking time off. (laughs) I just took some time off and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to. I put in my schedule. I'm just going to go to a hotel. Okay. So much easier. It's not just about you've got to work around the school hours. You've also got to work around your dog and a cat and people coming to the door. And mm. I'm just like, okay, let's just let's just go somewhere else and have like peace and quiet to be able to do what you need to. But yeah, I can do stuff, you know. He goes to school. I can do stuff in the morning. You know, can get the shower or the bath or whatever. I can do customs. Mm. So you, ju- it's just about scheduling and when you're going to be alone yeah do you you know obviously this is a like down the road question because it's it's not going to come up probably for a good you know a good number of years and and again this isn't about like he could he could never know what you do for work this and i i've asked this question to other people who don't do porn um but like have you thought about like how you will talk to him one day about porn and about sexual like how you're going to raise him about sex and gender and relationships you know I, this, this is a big topic. It's a big yeah. subject. You know, when I was younger, my mom gave me leaflets, you know, like we go to the doctor's office and she'd pick up a leaflet and give it to me and we learn stuff at school. Um, I you learn stuff at school? Yeah. We had we sex barely, education at school. We don't have it fucking here. We don't. Well, it, it no, well we, we could go down another route with this conversation, yeah, there, which I mean, there's, <laughs> there, there's, uh, we're not going to get into okay. politics, but there is a big movement in the US for people that want to control the way that schools educate children and they want to um, censor things mm-hmm. and they, you know, they don't want to talk about certain things like lgbtq plus yep. and you know for me i think you should know about everything but you should have an open mind about everything but you should be aware of it and you should be educated yeah. about it because then you can be like oh so that's what that is yeah but it doesn't mean you're going to want to do whatever it is that they're talking about but i yeah. think being given education and being given knowledge rather than just you know oh you can't talk about that because right. then it becomes underground. Or, and the Brits, we, I would we, imagine, we did y'all have don't a like class. The, I thought y'all didn't like to talk about sex. Uh, yeah. I thought, sure. no, y'all are like really kinky behind closed doors, but I felt like you guys as a culture don't want to speak it out loud. I can just remember we had to talk about something in school 
and I came in and I and I literally can remember right it was a blackboard and it was chalk and I did a diagram of a breast okay and I literally was like well I can't remember the different parts now but it was all the different breakdowns of a breast and like no one said anything to me and I was like who would have thought like years later there I'd be like getting my breast out <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but but yeah we did we there was a class where you could talk about it and we did mm. get education I mean it wasn't a lot of education but it was some education okay you know and so coming back to it I think still if we are um given you know education we can make our own decisions about things. Mm-hmm. It's not about having things pushed on you or brought on you. But I think if you have a conversation where you can be open and you can listen, um, and, you know, when people get older, or kids get older, you know, you're going to be that kind of person where if, you, if you're if you going to listen and support someone, they're going to be willing to come to you to talk about things and open up about things. Mm-hmm. So that's... If you normalize sex at a... At- not young like five but like if you normalize sex at 12 not for them but just as a concept when Mm -hmm. they are 22 when they're 32 when they're 42 like they will feel less weird about it then it's all about you know we're trying to like plant seeds so they're not like fucked up adults yeah you know yeah um and and so that's why i asked is like if you think okay well like how do i raise my young boy to be a better man Mm -hmm. in a world where i think we're trying to get boys to be better men yeah uh, which I think in part includes how we talk to boys about sex and relationships. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he's not there yet. No, of course. He's, right, right, right. He's this, but like, I would imagine but, like, maybe yeah. it's something in, in your mind. You're like, oh, like, how will I? Like, my, yeah. my sister has a, a three year old and two year old. Um, and like, already they were like, well, we know we're going to say like the. Um, the the anatomically correct words for stuff so we're not going to use like cutesy words like pp or no no spot like we're going to say vagina we're going to say penis like we're we know we're not for yeah. example so it's like they yeah. i know like they her and my brother-in-law have been thinking like well how will we talk to, they're kind of like mapping out a few years ahead yeah at a time so yeah. that that was my that was what yeah. i was asking about you know even like now it's like reiterating like where your personal area is mm-hmm. and you know who who can touch it and who can't touch right. it you, you know so it's just right now it's things like that you mm-hmm. know is is this appropriate or is this inappropriate yeah. you know is it, it's not everyone it, does that yeah, I, like, I like you're saying it like it's like well yeah i talk with this and not a lot of people do yeah well i yeah you know so i'm glad kids, to hear that kids yeah. will smack you and it's like you know excuse me you know that's is this inappropriate or appropriate behavior Mm -hmm. so it's not just about sex it's about the way that you interact with other people as well you know and i think i i want to bring them up to be able to respect people and to know people's boundaries Mm -hmm. um so you know just by reiterating and you know sharing wisdom yeah you know now hopefully it's going to put them on the right path yeah. and just having other people around you to support as well yeah you know that's I, great yeah um and but did your did your like parents ever talk to you beyond the leaflets no no it, it was like please don't ask me any questions just read this. i don't know i felt embarrassed <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly i felt embarrassed to talk to parents about any of that kind of stuff mm. so but i don't know i <laughs> Let's see what happens when you know my son's older it's you know well, it's it's going to be a different world it's a different time you yeah. know so who knows well you know when we were kids like they weren't talking about like consent and things like that mm-hmm. and so it's like it's nice that like now we have like but get that fly we get it well, landed on me water oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you should have seen me yesterday i was i was there i had a body count in that in there i was like pow Pow. And if they were piling up, I had to like scoop them into the sink. I was very proud of myself. Oh. Uh, that was, but also as a New Yorker, that's the closest to hunting I'm ever going to get. Well, you I'm know not- what you can get? You can get like this. It's it's a gun and it's a salt gun. And what you do, you, it, it's on Amazon, a yeah. salt gun, and it's for killing flies. So when you see one, you get it out and you aim it. I can't do it. <laughs> Ozzy was having a go the other day. <laughs> I was like, just get the fly. But I got a plug in the wall one, which has got like a light on it and the, the flies all stick to it. Yeah. And that kind of works. <laughs> well, so so as as we mentioned earlier, like you also are a publicist for other uh, adult entertainers. And 
or you know, or I mean, you've got like some very established veteran um, clients, but like, do you have like newer, fresher, maybe like three years and below? clients would you say yeah Fresh you know we do, we in, have we have a lot of different clients you know some they come they go yeah. you know sometimes they just want a one-off press release um but yeah i mean we have like one of our clients she's just been in the industry just coming up now to yeah. 12 literally 12 months we're just doing a press release to say it's a you know she's hit, just hit the 12 month mark yeah. in the industry so yeah you know there's there's never a wrong time to get pr yeah. what you need to do to get pr is be committed because people just think you know i had someone come to me and she's like oh i've had other publicists and they just do everything for me and i'm like well we don't do that when i asked about having younger clients or newer clients i should say yeah. to the industry is do you find as a veteran performer yourself almost like playing a little bit of coach when it comes mm -hmm. to like what to put public private like, do you ever talk to him about like, hey, you know, I was reading through your Twitter and I don't know, you may want to consider not revealing X or Y or Z. Do you ever find yourself I, in that role? Honestly, when someone comes to us mm -hmm. and they want to be a potential client, first thing I do is look at the Twitter timeline. Mm -hmm. And if it's full of drama and I'm just like, okay, that's, one, that's yeah. a no, that's a no, <laughs> like we're full. And like if people are causing drama and they thrive off drama they're mm. always going to thrive off drama. Like that's mm. that's not our ideal client. You don't um, think that's the good, a uh, 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 worthwhile kind of publicity? Well, for the price that they pay us, for the amount of time that I'd have to be sitting there trying to recorrect them and try and talk to them, it's it's too frustrating for me. That's mm. that doesn't give me enjoyment. Sure. I I like I'm going to take on clients that I think do have some personality, do have things to give, do want to do well with PR you know you have to do your interviews you've got to write them yourself I'm not writing your interviews for you mm. you've got to come and do the podcast yeah. I, I, admittedly I very rarely do a podcast <laughs> I told you I was, I, I was flattered <laughs> by the way all that back and forth I was like she's still not saying never mind like I was like okay like that, I, I frankly that made me more curious about I, you I looked you I, I looked up you don't have that many followers on like regular social media mm. but then I looked at like the rating of your podcast yeah. and I saw it was more of a mainstream and I said, you know what? I, I'm going to do it. I'm like I, I just, but I don't, if it's like a normal like porn podcast, I don't necessarily do it because it's a lot of the same fans. You know, for me, I also have it's a all horny questions we were talking about before we turn yeah. the mics on yeah. where you go like, like 10 years ago, I you'd just be like, did sure, my but first but anal. Which I well, just that's... did do my first anal. <laughs> well, that's that is see that was my initial curiosity. And normally, I don't have this like, you know, bro, is the guy because he was repping. It was a vivid. Was the company the or the parent company of whatever studio did that? Milfy. It's, Milfy, it's well. It's, so I did it with Milfy. It's Vixen Media. Vixen. That's what it was. Yeah. So so he's rep. He works with Vixen. So like I got the, I get his press releases for whatever. Yeah. So he's like, well, she's not my client. Here's her email. But like, so but I got the press release for the first. Yeah, email, and I was like, but... she's been doing it 15 years, and she's just huh. Like I normally don't yeah. have questions about that. But I'm yeah. like, was she not doing it on her personal? Like like that's the first time I was like. Oh, maybe I do have questions about like her personal sex life because it's interesting to hold off because and you and maybe speak on this is some gals obviously like they do whatever they do in their personal life, but they know like you can strategically do your first blank, your first blank, because you can then say it's my first girl, girl, it's my first anal, yeah. it's my first Strat bang, bang, strategy whatever. of your career. Right. But like some but when it's 15 years, I think. Maybe she was always like, oh, I don't do anal. And then maybe like, did she like do anal in her personal life and go like, oh, I could do that on camera now. I don't know. Like, I, I got why, it. Okay. You, it? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. So like I did anal in my personal life okay. and before I, you know, made movies. Yeah. And um, I remember when I first started making movies, I was, you know, you, you hang out with, with people off set and I was hanging out with a guy in the UK and I'll, t I'll tell you his name. I don't mind. Andy <laughs> man. And he's got like, he's very well endowed he used to shoot for kilogram in the uk and they only ever shot um british because it was it was all about it was british accents mm -hmm. they, they only ever shot british people with big dicks and british. so yeah b british guys with big dicks bbds I big don't british know. dicks I don't know. <laughs> so i i shot for them and like i was friends and i was just like i thought and and i remember i was contemplating do i want to do anal or not and I just said to the guy, I was like, 
let's, let's just try it. Right. Like, you know, just try it. And it went in and I was like, oh, well, yeah, that was good. So trying a big dick, not just a regular big dick, trying a big dick up my ass. And it, it was good. Um, and then, you know, I started making a lot more movies and it was all vaginal sex. Yeah. But here's the thing, what people don't realize about anal the regular public doesn't realize to do an anal scene, you have to prepare and you, and I'm not just talking about sticking a douche up your backside. You have to prepare the way that you eat and you have to start doing it almost two days before. And then, so the day before you're on certain foods, which I probably ate stuff that I shouldn't have ate because then the morning of, you know, you stop eating like at five o'clock the night before and you have like a salad while well, I'm starving. It's like getting a physical. I was like, like starving. <laughs> the next day you wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't eat anything. And all I had was these gummies and juice. And mm. I was like, oh my God, I need to eat. You can't eat. You got to, you know, you take a, a modium to kind of block you up and then you've got to start douching, douching. And I don't even know with me, it took a long time. And so you got to douche it all out. Mm -hmm. and then it's like okay now you're finally ready so you're doing it you're starving you've had no food you've you've put a douche up your ass i don't know how many times and now you got to be turned on and now you got to be like i know i'm not ready <laughs> so for me that was always such a scary thing mm. like you know i like to eat three times a day you, you know i eat very healthy but i eat like and i, if I, if I wake up and i'm like i need to eat like i need my breakfast i need my oatmeal i need my smoothie and that was kind of scary anyway i just thought you know what i'm ready the fans have always wanted it i'm ready i'm gonna do it so i'm just gonna just put the the, the reservations away and just go with it mm -hmm. um and so basically that's what it was but you know it's it's anal on camera with a big dick is not the easiest thing to do because of the preparation you know if you're going to do vaginal sex mm. where you just have a shower whatever you might need a little bit of lube you might need a little bit of warming up but you don't need to do there's not all that other prep work involved mm. um so i i guess you know that was kind of why okay. it took so long and because i had a break from doing boy girl as well sure. and because all my scenes i only do boy girl for me Mm. That's the way, like I say, I haven't picked the guys. And I do them for me and I do them for my paywalls. Um, so, you know, if you want to see me do a brand new boy girl scene, you're probably going to have to go to my OnlyFans, sign mm. up and watch it or see if I've put it on one of the, you know, many vids or Sex Panther yeah. or Minx. You go there and you, you watch it. Um, so, Milfi got me first boy girl scene back for the mainstream movie in over 10 years. And then I followed it up with my first anal. All right. So, but I love Mil but I did love you, Milfi. Did you hit them up and say, "I think I'm ready"? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I did cool. because it was, you know, I, I've shot for Brazzers, I've shot for Naughty America, and I Naughty America. I know they love me. I know their fans love me, and they're, they're great people. And they they, if I said I'm coming back now, they would be biting my hands off. You know, I I saw them at AVM. We're always being on very very good terms, but I'm I'm like, you know what, I. I'm going to be strategic. Milfi and Vixen, they weren't established when I stopped doing Boy Girl. Okay. And, you know, now the, the very big company, there's, it's very high end, very glamorous, big, you know, big sets, uh, in, uh, elaborate productions, beautiful, glamorous, great, great company to work with, mm -hmm. you know. And Craft services? Yes. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Like whatever. Like okay. <laughs> okay. You go. You go on your phone and you pick and you put it in the cart and it turns up for you. You know. I, I, I've heard <laughs> stories from some vets where they go like, "Yeah, we know like things were going down when like the craft services stopped. Like, there was no more of that. They stopped feeding us." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh wow, that's okay, the budget." Yeah. Well, that that was that was the difference between a company with money and a company cutting sure. corners. Yeah. You, you know. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a wonderful company. And I was like, you know, if I'm gonna, just going to do just one or two scenes, I'm going to do it with them. Right. And so I did approach them, yes. And I did ask and There was a lot of talk and, you know, and if you see another scene with me, it's going to be for Vixen mm. Media. 
it's going to be for them. Um, and just by limiting it, I, I love the fact that I'm doing a scene. I'm, I'm getting seen in front of the fans. The fans are seeing me back in mainstream and it, you know, it helps. It's a, it's also an advertising tool. Mm. It's a promotional yeah. tool. So, and then, you know, there's only two scenes. If you want to come back and see me, come back to my only fans. Okay. So, you, you know, and also, you know, I'm a mom. I don't want to be shooting every day. Like I'm not, it's not 10 years ago. It's not 15 years ago when I didn't have anything else to do apart from shoot. You know, I have a, I have a son, I have a family, yeah. I have a house to run. I have the PR company. I have a podcast as well. Yep, so Skinfluencer Success Podcast. Um, I do that where I interview other guests and we talk about, you know, different stories where they've overcome, you know, difficulties. I don't like to talk about the crappy parts of it. I like to talk about, well, how did you get to where you are? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the positive things. I, I'm all about positive stuff, yeah. you know. Um, so I have the podcast. I like to work out. It's, I, I'm like, I, I do my 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 premium stuff. Yeah. It, it, there's no time to just be on call for an agent to be like, I need you at set today. I'm like, no, if you want me on set, we plan it weeks in sure. advance and I weeks plan in advance. I'm going to plan out what I'm going to eat. No, it's like, Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Tanya, this was great. This is, this was lovely. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm thank you for like alleviating my anxieties before. Yeah. Um, do you have like an extra, maybe like 10 minutes that we can see what these, uh, what the, what the, the fans had to, had to ask. Yeah, let's, I have not gone through this. Okay. Let's, let's, um, <laughs> let's look at some of these questions. Yeah. then. I'm going to put this out on the Patreon. So Patreon people, you're going to hear these ask the guest questions tomorrow. And if you want to be able to ask, ask uh future guests of the show any questions you want you got to join the patreon but you got to throw down it's three dollars give me your three dollars i'm looking at i'm looking over here at the people who's not there i'm <laughs> th- give me your three and then you can ask whatever you want um so that that's in the ask the guest channel in the discord server the champagne room uh so that's going to be uh, available champagne for um, are you giving me some champagne uh, as well <laughs> the discord server it's called the champagne room because you know chris rock right Cause so he had like in the late nineties, he had like this song. It was called No Sex in the Champagne Room. And it's just like, it's kind of like a bit, but in song format where it's how like there is no sex in the champagne room. So it's just making fun of like guys who go to strip club who have like, who think kind of like similar to the point. They think they're going to get something that they pay. It's like, actually, no. Like, there's no sex in the champagne room. There is champagne in the champagne room, <laughs> but you don't want champagne. You want, you want sex. sex. And there is no... So anyways, I call it the champagne room. Um, so <laughs> Patreon people, you're going to hear that tomorrow. But uh, for now, Tanya, where can people go to find you, follow you, check out your work? Yeah, I'm on Twitter, Sex Panther, Minx, OnlyFans, many vids, all under Tanya Tate. Mm-hmm. I'm also on TikTok and YouTube under Tanya Tate Tube. And my Instagram is Tanya Tate Create. And of course, go and Google, look up my podcast, Tanya Tate Presents Skinfluencer Success Podcast. Fantastic. Well, folks, go check all that out. Um, Tanya, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody for now? Oh, goodbye to all you lovely, lovely people. (laughs) Right at the end, you turn on the porn. (laughs) I I, I could actually say, go and have a wank for me. Mm. <laughs> you dirty bastard. Check the Patreon feed to hear some personal behind the scenes thoughts about setting up my recording with Tanya Tate, how I felt about it. Uh, I, you know, definitely it almost felt contentious at times, but once we actually started recording, hey, we were we were good. You heard it. She was wonderful. Catch that on the Patreon feed. All Patreon members are invited to... Ha, ha, whoa. 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 Hot movie night. Uh, hot movie night's coming up on August 15th at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Become a member today. Support the pod you love. And then come watch porn with your fellow fan whores at patreon.com slash man podcast or download the Patreon app. You can find me on there. You can always shoot me an email with your comments, your questions, your criticisms, your titty pictures to man pod at gmail.com. You can follow me on uh, Instagram and threads at Billy is Presida. You can follow me on TikTok at the Billy Presida and you cannot 
follow my not third cousin, Ronnie. All of my $5 and up fan whores on Patreon are getting a bonus episode with Tanya Tate, where we do the ask the guest questions. Y'all had quite a few for her. And we cover all of that in the bonus. And right now I'm going to play a little teaser of that for you. Uh, so enjoy the enjoy the taste. I hope you'll sign up for membership. And I swear you better fucking stay slutty. Also, wasn't Deadpool so fucking good? Wasn't it so good? Come talk to me about it in the Discord. Okay, bye. Here's the thing. If you want to put out the... I don't know, DVDs aren't really yeah. the thing anymore. But if you used to want to put out a DVD, you'd have to go to this broadcasting authority and they would stamp it. So they would either say, yes, that's okay. Oh, no, take that out. Someone at the government had to sit and watch the yeah, porn. It, it, yeah, so it was like it was like a, a, a broadcast. Great job. Yeah, it was like a broadcasting agency <laughs> that benefits. were part. Um, it, that's what the government wanted yeah. is like, well, we need to vet this porn and we can see and we will tell you what is and what's not allowed and i think from there that's when they came in with like you can't do the spanking they were very specific in the acts and i was kind of quite vocal at the time Mm. um but yeah they were very specific 